Hey, I'm Johnny K. And this is part 10, installing the crankshaft and take some readings for the big block Chevy. So here's a tip that you can do. You can polish your own rod journals and your crank journals on the crank. Okay, these have already been polished. I did this with the crank out. And it was just an afterthought to show you this. Basically, you start off with 400 grit paper, then go to 800 grit, and then 1,000 grit. Basically, you take your piece of paper, you cut it to the correct width. And you correct the correct length. You just want the two pieces to butt up against each other. You don't want it to overlap, okay? Then you'll take oil, squirt oil on here, put oil on the paper, put it back on here. Then you'll take I like to use, this is like a leather strap. You can use a shoelace, but sometimes the shoelace slips on the paper where this leather strap, it doesn't slip. And you just take it, you wrap it around. You go back and forth, and that's how you, you polish your crank journals. You always want to keep oil on here, so every now and then take the paper off, squirt some oil on there, wrap it back around, and you just go back and forth. And that's it. That's how you can polish your rod journals and your crank journals at home. All right, we got our block all clean. It's clean, it's clean, it's so clean I could eat off of it. We got our crank, we just took it out of the parts washer, we took a rifle brush, Cleaned out all the holes, got all the gunk out of there. It's clean, it's clean, it's clean. <laughs> all right, so we got our rings, we gap those, we put them on our pistons, we got the right orientation. So that's all set. Our next step now is we're going to These are some tools I use. Dial indicator, once our crank is set in place, we'll put on this little extension here. This little tip comes off. We put the extension here, the tip goes on this side. And then that way, we'll uh, check for run out on our crank. Show you how to do that. I use a little assembly grease. I use some SAE 30 oil some brake cleaner, and a rag, lint-free rag. All right, now what I like to do, I'm gonna take a lint-free cloth, just gonna wipe the bearings off, lint-free cloth, to make sure everything's good, no debris on there. I'm gonna take some assembly lube, I'm gonna coat the bearings, try and make sure I'm not plugging up the oil holes, don't do that. And then I'll do the, the bottom bearings, the four bolt main caps. I'll do that too with this grease. And then I already blew out the oil holes in the crank. I'm going to take this lint-free cloth, wipe down the crank journals, and then I'll set this crank in. Some guys prefer to use engine oil. I like using <clears throat> assembly lube because it won't drain off or leave any dry spots on the bearing. Now one last thing that we have to do, all of our bearings have assembly lube on them. We have to take the seal, the rear main seal. Okay, here's the rear main seal. See that little lip right there? That's gotta go towards the front of the motor. If you put it in wrong, you're gonna have a major oil leak. You don't use any sealant or anything on it. You just push it in and just make sure that lip is going towards the front of the motor. And we're just going to make sure our surface is all clean. Just using a lip free, free rag. You just push it in and you're done. Now what I like to do, I actually like to roll this a little bit. Just about three eighths up, like that. What that does is the oil line is not in line with the horizontal joint. So it would be tougher for oil to pass through the seam right here. You don't have to do that. You can just put it in flat, call it good. 
it's just preference. I just like to roll it just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to put our crank in. You don't use any sealant on this rear main seal at all. You just stick it in there, set it in there, put a little light oil on the seal, and then set your crank in. And then also on the mating surface of the bearing, you don't want any grease or oil on that mating surface. Okay, so I went ahead and I installed the rear main seal in the lower or bottom main cap. And if you notice that the little lip here, that's facing towards the bearing, or you can say the lip is facing towards the front of the motor. Take note, I rolled the seal just a little bit so that it is not in line with the parting line of the main cap. And then I take some of the good old Permatex Super 300 form a gasket sealant. And I'll put a little here, right by the seal, and a little here on the other side of the seal. Okay, so now that we have a rear main seal installed, the lip is facing towards the bearing or towards the front of the motor. We got our assembly grease on the bearing itself. We got the Super 300 Permatex on each side of the lower half rear main seal. And we just bring that right out to the edge here, same here, from the seal right out to the edge. We can go ahead and we'll install our main cap. We'll put the bolts in, run them down snug, take a rubber mallet, tap on the main cap to make sure it's seated, and then go ahead and torque your bolts. One thing I want to talk about is thrust bearing failure prevention. I guys just put the caps on, tighten it down, beat the front to set their thrust bearing. Okay, so you've got your main caps on, you got your APR Ultra Lube on the threads and on the top side of the washer. You got your bolts run down finger tight. Come through with your rubber mallet. You seat all the main caps. Okay, that's set. Grab your torque wrench and you set it to 10 foot pounds of torque. Go ahead and you start torquing these. Now there's a sequence. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five. And that's the order you torque me, okay? So we're going to start at number one, torque it to 10, and you work inside to the out. That's 10, 10. Okay, we're going to go at number two. Start at the inside. Okay. You go to number three. Now these are all set at 10 foot pounds. This initial snugging, it just seats all the bearings into the saddles, all right? Now let's go ahead and loosen these up. Okay, so we just loosen our bolts back up. They're all loose. We don't want to hit the main caps at all. We don't want to disturb them. Now we're going to take a rubber mallet, tap the crankshaft rear to close up the front thrust clearance. Okay, so here's the front thrust clearance. Front, go and tap the crank backwards, go and give that some whack with the hammer. Okay, now that we just tapped the port, we're going to tighten up all the bolts by hand, finger tight. You just want them snug, just by hand. Use a pry bar or a big screwdriver. We're going to force the crankshaft fully forward. What I do, so I'm not touching the main cap, I'll roll the crank down a little ways. I'll put my screwdriver in between the crank counterweight and the block so I'm not disturbing the main cap.
Okay, now I'm gonna pry this forward. So now that the crankshaft is moved forward, this will help align the rear thrust bearing face. Okay, now I gotta keep holding this. I'm gonna grab my torque wrench, keep holding, put, keep pressure on the screwdriver, pushing the crank forward. And now we're going to tighten all of our fasteners back down to 10 to 15 foot pounds of torque. Now you can release the pressure by removing the pry bar, finally tightening all the main cap fasteners to their final torque. You like to usually do it in three equal steps. Normally the big block is torqued to 110, but using their bolts and their lube, they want you to torque it at 100 foot pounds. By doing what we just did, that's called thrust bearing failure prevention. Okay, so now your crank is all in, the main caps are torqued down. Now when you spin it, you should be able to spin it by hand, and uh, it doesn't hang up at all, it spins great. And it shouldn't hold up, freeze up, lock up, it shouldn't go and then stop, get hard. And then you gotta kind of push it around. You, if, if you gotta do that, there's a problem. Stop, start over. I would suggest take off the main caps, take everything out. So we have our dial indicator. All we're going to do, we're going to add this extension to it. This comes off, this screws in. We're going to screw in this end back on it. Make sure it's tight. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take it. Just got to make sure you're not going to hit the oil hole as it comes around. Make sure when you push it down that the dial goes a couple revolutions around. Tighten everything down. Main it's on, zero out your dial indicator. When you spin the crank, watch your dial. It should not move more than 0.0005. If it checks out good, you want it as close to zero as possible. If it checks out good, we're good.